Hi, this is Ganesh Murthy from Ivatac Solution. So in this video, we are uh, discuss about invoice management system, which is shortly called IMS. So we could understand at the end of session, what is IMS and why IMS is required and who are eligible to apt IMS and when it is implemented or going to implement it and how should we, we file IMS. Okay. What is IMS? What is Invoice Management System? It is a, a simple facility to enable us to accept, reject, or keep pending any inward supplies which is auto populated in GSTR 2B. Okay. So this is a it is a facility to avail correct ITC. So which are the invoices auto-populated in invoice management system? So other than these five categories of invoices, all the invoices are to be auto-populated in IMS. So which are the invoices not auto-populated? So ineligible ITC due to place of supply rule. For example, I am uh, availing uh, accommodation services in another state so that ITC is ineligible as per place of supply rules. So that ITC will not auto populated in invoice management system. And which ITC time limit under section 16.4 is lapsed, that ITC also will not auto populated in IMS. Uh, then ISK documents, for, for example, bill of entry. A bill of entry and should not auto populated in IMS, we cannot do any action against that. And RCM invoices, invoices which inward supplies, we are going to pay tax under reverse charge mechanism, will not auto populate in IMS. And GSCR 5 and GSCR 6. So document filed through GSCR 5 and GSCR 6 will not auto populate in IMS. Then any amount we reverse manually in GSCR 3B, that will not be auto populated. Okay. So other than this five, all other inward supplies will be auto populated in IMS. Okay. So when IMS is implemented, actually it says with the effect from 1st October 2024, in the first advisory, it says all invoices from 1st October 2024 will be covered under IMS. And in the second advisory, it is said that uh, it will be enabled in the portal after 40th October. So, which means it is only applicable for the invoices from 1st October. That means for the October GSCR 2B, which is generated on 14th November, uh, we may use the IMS facility. Okay. And there is a two different views in the IMS system, okay, invoice management system. The one is a recipient view. So where a registered person can assess his invert supplies and take action, okay? And the supplier view. In the supplier view, so we could uh, check the outward supplies and the action taken by the uh, buyer in that view, okay? So first, where we could assess the invoice management system in the GST portal. In the services, and return tab, we could assess the IMS dashboard. Once we open the IMS dashboard, there will be a two options, which is the inward supplies and another one is the outward supplies. So inward supplies is, I think already, it is enabled, but uh, not accessible right now. Outward supplies will be enabled uh, shortly, maybe. So uh, we could now see in the August month, GSTR 2B, there is a option to op open IMS dashboard. So this is the screenshot of that. So once we open IMS dashboard, uh, there will be a three column, all other ITC and inward supplies from ISD and import of goods. As we have already seen in the previous slide, inward supplies from ISD and import of goods, we cannot take any app action in the IMS dashboard. And it says in the advisory, it will not be auto populated in, in the IMS. So. So the first tab is very important, all other ITC. It contains a, a B2B and B2B amendments, a debit notes, credit notes, and e-commerce operator invoices. 
So here, it is a summary of the screen, whether uh, we have accepted, rejected, and list of uh, numbers is displayed here. So if you open the B2B invoices, uh, the inward supplies will be displayed like this. There is a multiple option. Uh, we could search and filter using this uh, option. So we could search by the GST number and filter by the invoice number and uh, few options is there as per the advisory. And we could, um, we could use this filter and we could accept, reject or bending. It is like a small round button. So we can select A, it means accepted that you can select multiple invoices through by selecting the serial number like this. By selecting a tick one by one, we could select uh, the invoices and then the title will be changed as a accept two records or reject two records or bending to two records because the two record is selected in this screen. So the title will be changed. You can select the title and we could accept the multiple records. If you have checked all the entries and all are eligible to you, so you could select the serial number like this. If you select tick uh, the serial number, there will be a dialog box will be open. It says whether uh, we, we could select only uh, number of records in this page or you want to select all the records in the uh, all the pages. Three action is there. One is accept and another one is a reject. And the third one is bending. So we know what is accept. So that supplies is always, it is our supplies. We have received the invert supplies. It is a genuine bill. So we could accept. And reject. If it is not related to us, uh, for example, the supplier wrongly entered our GS in. So we could directly reject it. So there is a no uh, doubt regarding accept and reject. What is the bending? And what is the reason for that? So the bending action, uh, what to say? When there is a no clear uh, confirmation whether that invoice is ours or not, or for example, uh, the invoice uh, generated on 30th, uh, so month end, okay. So that 30th October or 31st October, and the goods actually received in the uh, November month, in the subsequent months. So in that case, what we are doing in the current scenario, we are we took that ITC and reverse in the uh, column number 4B2 as a temporary reversal to reclaim in the subsequent months. So by using this facility, we could avoid that uh, reversal and reclaim. So we could uh, kept as a bending that invoice will not be auto populated in GSER through B. Sorry, will not be auto populated in GSER 3B. So that invoice will be uh, auto populated in then GSER 2B and it, it, it is kept uh, in the IMS portal, IMS dashboard itself. So, so we could uh, skip the step of uh, reclaim legend. Okay, so bending action would not be available for the below scenarios. When a credit note is, so for a credit note, we cannot take action as a bending. If a credit note received, we should accept or reject. So then only the liability of a supplier will be determined through the IMS. Okay, so for the same, once you have rejected the credit note, the upward amendment and downward amendment cannot be kept as a bending. Same issue. So the credit note and the debit note. Okay. So bending action would not be available for the belowing scenarios. Very simple, a credit note. A credit note cannot be kept as a bending once a credit note issued by the supplier and it is auto populated in the GSCR 2B as well as IMS, you should take action as accepted or rejected. Okay. It cannot be kept as a bending. Uh, what, what is the reason? Uh, for a bending action not available for this because uh, the supplier's liabilities depend on it. Okay, so once you have rejected it or you are accepted it, the supplier liability also 
reduce. Once you rejected it, the supplier liability is to be increased in the subsequent month GSCR 3B. So in that case, you cannot be kept as a kept as bending for a credit note. And the same, if you have rejected the credit note, the upward amendment and downward amendment done by the supplier also cannot be kept as a bending. And the fourth one is downward amendment of debit note or invoice rejected. So once you have rejected the debit note or a credit note and the supplier is doing a downward amendment by reducing his liability, so that also will not be kept as a bending. Okay, so the important points to be considered in the IMS. First, if a original and amendment records belong to two different GSTR through B, then it is mandatory to take action on the original record. For example, uh, the invoice is issued on October, and thereafter, uh, due to the price difference or any other reason, a credit note is issued on November or December in the in another um, GSTR 2B period. Okay, so in that case, you should take action on the original invoice to take action action against the that said credit note or debit note or something. It's okay, so if no action taken on the original invoice, then you cannot take action on the credit note also. So this is the important points to be noted. And if the GSCR 3B is not filed, IMS will not be accessible for the next month. So you have to file the uh, previous month GSCR 3B to assess the invoice management system dashboard for the month. And the excess utility also available in the IMS dashboard, we could download and do the same. If the recipient reject the credit note, it will be added to the supplier's liability in the subsequent month, GSCR 3B. So this is the important one. If, uh, if we reject a credit note, that liability, so the supplier already uh, reduce his liability. If we reject it, that liability will be added to the subsequent month, GSCR through B automatically. And uh, as we have already seen, multiple action can be taken until filing of GSCR 3B. Okay. And IMS facility is not mandatory, it is only obligatory. If we are not uh, ready to have IMS, we could uh, skip the IMS dashboard as per the current scenario, we could avail the ITC. Okay, so it is not a mandatory one. Next, so what will happen once the action taken? So, as we have said, there is a three action, and the fourth one is no action. When no action is taken, it will be a current scenario. Okay, the accepted records, the accepted records will be auto populated in GSTR 3B. Okay, the rejected record will not be auto populated in GSTR 3B. So we need not to reverse, uh, take ITC and reverse as per the circular 170. And bending records will not be auto populated in GSTR 2B. So it will be remain in the IMS dashboard until the section 16 for time limit lapsed. Okay, so until that we could accept and reject. Uh, it is a bending records. If, if no action is taken, it will be considered as deemed accepted. Okay. Okay. Why this facility is introduced? It is set in the advisory that for availing correct ITC and reduce errors, saving time and resources, and taxpayers' convenience. So it is what set in the advisory. But actually, we are moving forward to the legendary GSCR 2 and GSCR 3. We are already off with that. This IMS facility is a um, proof that we are possibly within three to five years. We have to file the GSCR 2 and 3. There is the ultimate uh, um, goal of the GST, I think. Okay. So, um, and generally, whether this IMS facility will be much helpful for us or it will be a burden to us. So that is the huge question mark. Uh, what my opinion is, uh, it is uh, 
it will be very helpful uh, it, it will be very helpful for the taxpayers if a taxpayer uh, for example a company and filing his tax return by themselves by appointing a full time accountant or something uh, this facility will be a much benefit to them because they are dealing with a uh, their company they know uh, everything and they are dealing with only a single concern so it will be very useful for them and very easy for them to assess this portal and take action as a consultant as a gst practitioner as a ca it is not easy to uh, assess this portal for uh, every clients so this is my view and whom it is applicable the ims facility is applicable to all the taxpayer regular taxpayer including special economic zone unit and casual taxpayer and it is not applicable to the composition dealer because the composition dealers is not going to avail itc okay and uh, till now we have seen the inward supplies how to assess the inward supplies and take action in the ims dashboard and the next one is outward supplies okay the supplier has to uh, view this and take action against outward supplies okay before we go to the outward supplies um the the one point i have missed so every month you have to so, uh, you have to select compute gscr 2b so act, act, after you take action accepted rejected and bending you have to select compute gscr 2b then only the gscr 2b is mm, generated as of now uh, the 14th of every month uh, gscr 2b is generated here after that will be considered as a draft gscr 2b the original uh, gscr 2b is after you take all the actions and you select the compute gscr 2b the gscr 2b will be replaced that will be called as a original gscr 2b so it is all in the advisory once it is come into live uh, we will see the actual one okay so once uh, you have selected the outward supplies there there will be a um, financial year and return period once you selected the month and year uh, we could see this view universal view of b2b supplies reported in gscr1 so what we have declared in gscr1 and imf will be here and the records rejected by the um, buyers uh, which is liability liability added back to the gscr through that means when the credit note rejected by the buyer that will be reflected in the second column rejected records okay okay so we could download the summary in excel also okay so then we have selected the b2b summary for example i have a screenshot attached for a b2b invoices so when we open a b2b invoices there is here also the filter option and search option is there uh, there will be a receipt and gsc number invoice number what we have filed uh, when we drag into right side of the page we could find the status in that status whether action taken by them or uh, no action taken by them what is the uh, status will be uh, displayed here and the gscr 3b filing status also uh, there okay so this is as per the advisory after it came into live any uh, difference there i will uh, post a separate video for it and thank you if any discrepancies are doubt um, you may contact us and never hesitate to point out our mistakes okay so and uh, thank you thank you all